What's up guys and gals, welcome to the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Forsaken Isle. We're going to be taking a look at the alpha over the next couple episodes. I figure we'll probably do five to six episodes of this game because as of right now, there's not a lot of content in the game, but what there is is a whole lot of crafting. So if you're unfamiliar with Forsaken Isle, that's for a reason. The developer hasn't put it on, it's on green light right now, and actually it surprises me that this game hasn't already been approved because even in its current primitive state, it has quite a bit more crafting than most of the quote-unquote crafting games that you're going to find elsewhere. Now the downsides of this title obviously is that there's not a lot of bosses there's no actually there's no bosses that's that's how few of a lot of bosses there are there are none and so there are very few enemies there's no bosses or anything to really do aside from just kind of terraform the map and do whatever you want with it and I'm hoping that they decide to add that in the future as of right now there's something like 200 different recipes and items and things in the game so if you're really addicted to crafting and just making different knickknacks this will probably be a game that scratches that itch so deeply like when you get that perfect mosquito bite on your elbow and you're just itching it and you're like I don't even care that it's gonna swell up. This feels so good right now. It's going to be like that. And so in Forsaken Isle, you play a pirate who's been marooned on an island, and you've just got to survive. That's pretty much it. There's no storyline. There's no emergent anything. It's just you on an island. You run around. You find stuff. You put it together like MacGyver, and you end up building yourself like PlayStations and all kinds of crazy stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play the new game. All right. And so you may have noticed the lack of background music. That's basically how primitive the game is right now. I I really do think that it's kind of an interesting way that the developers decided to make the game, though, focusing on just making a ton of items first. Like, just making the crafting system as robust as possible before moving on to other things. And so I do feel like they've got something pretty good going right now. This is the way that we're going to be looking at the game for the rest of our playtime. What we need to do first is talk about the controls. So if I right click, nothing happens, but right clicking actually makes you place items. So if we had a placeable item like a chair or a table, we would right click it into place once we'd selected it in our hotbar up above. These all correlate with the number obviously that you press on your hotkeys. I've picked up a couple sticks. In order to pick things up, you just walk up like that and you left click them and he will dig through this little, he just kind of uses like a monkey fist right there. That's basically his baseline tool is he just monkey fists the hell out of everything. Like he comes into this bush and he's just like, you know what bush? I'm going to punch you until you drop berries. And so, in that classic way of taming nature, it drops the berries and everything moves on without any further conflict. We've got pigs. Right now, what we need to focus on is, because our first night is coming, we need to focus on finding some flint, which is this right here. Awesome. We've got some metamorphosed chert laying around. Some sticks. We need to find some rocks. We also need to find a corner of the map that we can hole up in, because when you die, it respawns you in just a random spot on the map. And so that can become very, very troublesome for finding your way back home. These different areas on the ground, there's not a lot of biomes or anything like that on the in the game. We can walk through these little hedgerows right here without any further troubles. The leaves completely and totally leave us alone. I think that... As of right now, the building system is pretty interesting. I do like building stuff in this game, and I would treat it almost like... I, I started playing Minecraft shortly before they put the nether in, which was... Oh, it's, it's probably like the earlier part of Alpha, but not necessarily like the beginning of development. But I started playing Minecraft probably sometime around... Oh, it's tough for me to put a year on it, but before they put in the nether anyway, so before Enderman and before any of that even existed, before like half the recipes that are in the game now existed, I would say that this game is sort of in that state where there's not a whole lot to do in game aside from just build and have fun on your island. The crafting materials and all of the crafting recipes are in place, which actually is a really, really good thing because that tends to be the thing that keeps me going anyways. And so for right now, what we want to do is I think we're getting closer maybe to a corner of the map, but we're going to keep on trucking. Let me grab as many sticks as possible. That's right. I know why we're popular at the Y. And so we'll grab ooh, a couple of carrots. I'm not really a big carrot fan, which might explain why I'm so blind in my midlife right now. But, you know, it, it takes the penalties for the actions that you took earlier in life. I mean, like, no, I don't want any carrots, Mom. And she'd be like, you should probably eat them or you're going to go blind or something. And then, like, no, rabbits are evil and I will not participate in their shenanigans. Okay, a couple more rocks. Now, if we want to open up our inventory, we just press the E button, and we can take a quick hard look at anything that we want. I'm going to start arranging things. Just sort of food's going to go down in the bottom corner so that we don't have to worry about that being around in weird spots. I'll take these seeds. We're going to use these in a little while to plant our garden. That's right. There's a gardening slash growth system where you can just start making your own food if you need to later on. I'm going to keep useful items like the sticks, and I don't know why those two didn't combine. Seaweed is food. You can just grab it out of the ocean and have yourselves a major powwow if you want to. You're like, mmm, delicious. It tastes like seawater and grass. It is truly living up to its nomenclature. 
I think we want to wander off of this direction more. I think we're about to hit a corner of the map. So I'm going to continue grabbing flint and stones. In fact, if there was a way that I would actually compare this game, I would say that it's very, very similar to Don't Starve when it first released on Steam. There wasn't a ton of stuff to do, but you could tell without a shadow of a doubt that there was potential because everything else in the game felt so polished and tight. That's how I feel about this game. You could tell that there's... I always use this phrase, but you could tell that there's been a tremendous amount of love put into this game just because everything feels tight and works the way that it's supposed to and everything appears to have had care when it was planned out so I think we are in the top corner right now realistically what I'd love to do is take a pickaxe and get rid of all this stone over here just mine through the walls and get rid of it all and if that worked that would leave us with a huge space on which to plop down our base because our base plops he's been I'm not sure why he's plopping like he's viscous or something like that because most assuredly our base is incredibly rigid and don't tell him I said that that'll give him all kinds of weird ideas I don't know how our base is a him either but you know you guys have all heard the bit already nonetheless it plops when it hits the ground it's made out of stone you'd figure it would clatter or it would bang or it would make like a thump but nope it is definitely like a wet sloppy noise when I drop it haven't been able to get to the bottom of it. I have a few hypotheses, mostly involving what I've been feeding my base. And as I understand it, described to me from other engineers and physicists, like physicists, I, I hear it described that typically bases don't actually have to eat anything. And so I'm thinking I'm probably going to further investigate that situation before I go on with anything else. And since we're already up here, God, I don't know where I want to build this thing. We've got sort of a limited amount of space right now. Everything is kind of all over the place, and I would prefer to have a wide open area. So maybe we'll just travel to the left for a little while. If we wanted to, we could press the F1 button, and it'll turn off the lighting system so that it doesn't get dark at night and stuff like that, because as of right now, you're fairly night blind. But I'm going to leave it on because it adds a little bit of flavor. Once nighttime gets here, well, nighttime doesn't add flavor so much as it adds, like, terror and running around and hoping that you don't get eaten. And if that's a flavor, mm-mm-mm, sprinkle it on my Doritos. But... Once nighttime comes, we're going to have to fend off enemies. So the first thing we want to do is really, really focus on getting a weapon. You know how useful the spear is and Don't Starve? Same thing in this game. You really want to make the spear. The sword is pretty good, but it takes a little bit of practice just based on the way because it's got a limited reach on it. And so it's going to... Ooh, we need... Yeah, we need fibers. I forgot that we hadn't picked up any fiber as of right now. And so we really need to be focusing. This needs to be like a Raisin Bran slash Alpen for my... There we go. For my, <laughs> for my British fans. It's got to be like one of those Alpen situations. Does Alpen have a lot of fiber in it? I bet it does. I only know about Alpen because I heard them reference it one time in Peep Show. Like, their neighbor Tony downstairs is mad because they don't have Alpen at the store, and so he invites her over to eat his Alpen. I'd be like, mm-mm, cereal is a commodity in my house. I don't offer that to nobody. I'd be like, nope, cereal's off limits. You can have toast. <laughs> I'm going to continue, and once nighttime gets here, we have another problem. You'll see this meter down here. So, I didn't talk about any of these meters. Right now, we have health, we have hunger, we have thirst, which is not implemented yet. There is no thirst in the game right now. And we have our rightmost bar, which is our comfort meter. At least that's what I've taken to calling it. I don't know if that's what the developer himself calls it, but that's what... Oh, there's our first zombie. So we have a pirate zombie over here. What could be worse than just a zombie? A pirate zombie. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a weapon. We're also going to start getting cold really, really soon. And so we can make ourselves a campfire. We're going to need that. So let's go ahead and take the campfire. The second thing we're going to need is... Ah, yes. One thing I do like about the crafting in this game is that you could put... So if you put things in these crafting slots, it'll tell you every possible item that you can make with the stuff in here. Not necessarily combining all three or all two, but it will show you all of the things that you can make, which I really do like because it helps with the discovery aspect of the game. I can sit down and just load this thing out with dozens of items and then slowly remove one by one to figure out what's working with what. Now, as far as gear goes you can only equip helmets and ar I'm sorry there's no armor and there's no boots but you can equip helmets right now and there are a fair amount of tools and weapons up to iron I think so you have stone you have copper and you have iron in the game and we actually need to get moving so let me I'm going to convert all of these fibers into cordage and then we need a chisel for later on. Oh, I made another fire on accident. I shouldn't have done that. You're always stick wanting in this game. It can be difficult to come by sticks and so what we want to do now is drop that right there with our right click and so now you'll see that our comfort meter is going to rapidly increase I'm gonna beat up this pineapple over here because I don't like the way he's looking at me I, mean, I don't know if he's looking at me or not but it's definitely facing me in a rather sinister fashion now we can use the campfire as a crafting center as well if we right click the campfire we can set that you see up here how it's changed the icon we're no longer making things by hand we're now making things over the campfire And what we can do is we can cook these berries to double their efficiency and so I'm gonna go through we have 12 berries I'm going to go through and roast some of the mushrooms. 
will also, oh, you can make seeds or you can make, that's the other thing is you can make seeds or you can make food out of each of ones that you cook. I'm actually going to make seeds in this case because we're probably going to make a garden fairly shortly. I'm also going to roast this pineapple. I'm not going to, you kind of have a choice. I could either get the seeds out of the carrots or I could get the seeds out of the pineapple. So I went with the carrots. We'll eat those a little bit later. I think they both do similar hunger restoration. I'm going to put my berries right there because as you can see, we've lost a little bit of our hunger. And so we're going to munch on some foliage until we feel a little bit better. We also need to make ourselves a spear. And so that's going to be these three right here. And that's actually, in fact, the recipe for just about everything in the stone genre. I think I'll go with the flint spear for now so that we can defend ourselves. We also need an axe so that we can chop down trees. I'm going to get myself a pickaxe because we're definitely going to need maybe even like two of those. We're probably going to need a lot of stone pickaxes. You go through quite a few. Two chisels might do it as well. I think you need multiple chisels for later on in the game because we are going to be making workbenches and things like that. But for now, I think we're in pretty good shape. We could make baskets. The baskets, are they allow you to store items. I think they have two slots or four slots. I forget how many slots they have. It's not very many, though. It's not going to be enough to really get you by. We can also make a shovel, although I don't really... I haven't played around with a shovel yet, so I think that's going to be an item that I can't really tell you how useful it is or ain't. Now that we're back into daytime, what I think we should focus on is chopping down all of these trees. So I'm going to get going on this. There is a bug in the game right now, just so you're aware of it, where if you continue to use your axe, like let's just say that I'm standing over here swinging my axe randomly, it still loses durability. Hasn't been fixed yet. It's been in, I don't know. It seems like the version updates go out pretty frequently, and they do seem to be somewhat content dense. I mean, the developer really seems to like adding new things to craft, so I'm thinking this game is mostly going to focus on crafting more than anything else because almost everything that gets added to the game seems to be related to like stacking these couple items in this workbench will give you this new cool thing that you've always wanted I'm gonna use the entire durability of this axe hopefully okay so this axe is now broken we've gone ahead and we've destroyed its character to such a fashion that it's just a husk a broken husk of the axe that it once was I think I could fill in this water somehow but I'm not really it probably has something to do with the shovel I'm gonna, let's go to number eight, and I'm gonna eat some of these berries. To eat things, you just select them in your hot bar, and then you right click on yourself, and you'll see that I'm getting hunger plus eight, that flat percentile out of all of this, and it landed us just perfect on 100%. Couldn't have asked for a better result. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop down more trees, because I like to stockpile. I really, really sincerely do like to front load wood, so that I don't have to do it later. And so, what we needed is, we have a lot of sticks right now. We have like a lot of stuff to make all the items that we might want. And so I think I'm going to chop down a few more trees like so. Standard fair stuff. Early game, you're doing the same things that you're going to be doing in most crafting games, just from a different perspective. That's the only way that I would describe it, is they've taken that little Zelda motif and they've applied it to a top-down mechanic for the survival sims. Let's get rid of all this over here. I'm just going to destroy some forests. I'm going to be making Smokey the Bear all kinds of unhappy. There's going to be squirrels crying off in the corner. It's going to be like that commercial where the trash is like floating down the river and then there's like a Native American crying on the riverbank. Exact same thing. We're turning this island into our own industrial paradise. There will be absolutely no rule of law here. As long as it fits us and it makes us happy and it makes our lives easier, well then we're going to destroy nature and keep on going. So we're a pirate, that's what we do. We pillage and we plunder with reckless abandon. And so we will apply that to our ecological engineering strategy as well. A few more of those destroyed. There we are. And so I'm thinking what I'm going to do for today is I'm probably just going to record like three or four episodes of this. And you can all let me know down on the bottom. I mean, I was shouted out. That's what I would say is I encourage you to shout it out. Once you feel like the series has kind of gone the way of the buffalo, which is weird because there's still buffaloes around. In fact, there are buffalo farms here in California where there are just like buffaloes everywhere. Fun fact, buffaloes have raspy tongues. That's a little fact about buffaloes that most people might not know. They like to lick you. They like to taste you. It's a weird thing. I haven't visited a said buffalo and validated this theory, but what other people have told me who have been around buffaloes, which isn't fair because... Everybody around me knows that meeting a buffalo is one of my number one goals in life. Until I pet a buffalo, I cannot sign off on my bucket list. It just, I, I can't do it. Why I keep my list on a bucket, I'm not really sure. It was the only writing surface that was nearby. I had a Sharpie, I had a bucket, and I had a list to make. And so I went for it in true Splattercat fashion. So there's the spear right there if you're wondering how that works. It's not fancy, it doesn't look amazing, but it gets the gerb done. What we want to do right now is focus on making ourselves a crafting table. 
So we're going to go with logs and I believe cords. And that's going to give us a workbench. There it is. So we've got a workbench. I also think that we need a workbench and a chisel for something else, I think. Yeah, the lathe. That's what we needed. The lathe. An object so cool that it's called a lathe. I don't even think that I needed the lathe. I may not have needed it. Why did it left the chisel there, but it, I don't know. I just don't know anymore. Yeah, that is for the lathe. That's what I thought. So what we have to do now is we've got that. I'm trying to remember. Oh, that's right. We need to make ourselves a wood crafting bench. Oh, we need hammers for that. That's what it was. Okay, so I forgot that in my crafting list. We're going to put a rock right there. We're going to put a stick right there. Yeah, and somehow without fastening it, I guess we just shove it into the crevice of the stick. Some sticks seem to like it more than others, but this one, there we go. We make ourselves a hammer. I think we need two hammers because we're going to need one for our anvil later on too, I think. So I'll just try and make everything now. I'm going to try and keep things organized, but as you can see, it's falling apart already. There's just stuff everywhere. We'll drop that right there. We'll drop that right there. We've got the hammer. We've got the chisel. The chisel, if it's feeling fancy. I mean, actually, I probably... That's not it. I thought that was it. Is it flint, maybe? No, it's not flint. What was it? There's something here. So we've got the nice campfire. That's the fire pit. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays around forever. So the hammer, we've got the chisel, and we've got the stones. I may have to look this up in between episodes because I'm pretty sure... Oh, we have to do it from a workbench. I bet we have to do it from a workbench. I bet that's how it works. Let's go. We'll, we'll go take a look at it. So let's place that right there. The lathe right there. And so we've got some of our workbenches. And what we need to do now is let's hunt out a good spot for our base. I think we're going to walk for the duration of the day. And we'll find ourselves a really, really nice space to hang out. We should probably also murder some chickens, maybe kill some enemies. The nice thing about the weapons in this game is whereas every other tool kind of degrades over time, your weapons do not. And so as long as you've crafted your weapon that one time, you'll never have to make another one. I don't know if they're planning on adding durability in the future. There's the... Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting bit right now. That boar is actually defending himself. That is something that he is not supposed to do. He is supposed to just allow me to murder him. Alright, well let's kill off a few more pigs and get ourselves some bones, and we'll get ourselves some food, and we'll get ourselves some things to shove in our mouths, and that's kind of a precarious sentence to start yourself off with, but, oh well. That right there is a cave, you can dive down into that, and there's monsters, and there's things underground, and that's where you're going to find the majority of the ore in the game. I think you can occasionally get ore from the surface? Maybe? Maybe not. I like killing chickens. I find that they're actually one of the more efficient things to murder, because you can make arrows out of their feathers and whatnot. I do need to like print out the wiki for this game because I'm terrible at memorizing. Anybody who's been there for my stream, what stream was it? I think when I was streaming Terraria, you will know that I just have the worst time ever remembering crafting recipes. I just, I'm not able to do it. And so I'll show you what F1 does right now so you can turn off the lighting system if you wanted to so that you wouldn't know when it was night and when it was day except for the fact that there's like zombies and things running around. That right there is sugarcane. It's not actually going to be papyrus or anything like that. It's just sugarcane. You can make sugar cubes out of it which I think are used for something. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far down the crafting tree. I think it may be a wise idea now. I'm still not seeing any spots that are really striking me as like this is our home. Although this is looking pretty wide open. Okay. I'm thinking we may have a winner, right? Oh, we've got a zombie coming in. He's feeling brave. Let's see if we can get rid of him. Now, the secret to combat that I would give you in this game is to attack from diagonals. If you attack from laterality or horizontality, so let's say you attack from the right or from the left like I'm moving right now, you have a much higher chance of getting bit because that puts you right inside the reach of the enemies. However, the hitbox seems to be arranged in a strange way, whereas to the diagonals, you have far more reach on a diagonal than you do on a horizontal. I haven't tested verticals yet, but I would assume it's probably the same as horizontals. I'm not sure whether that's due to some overlap in the programming of the game or what it is, and I apologize if it's dark right now. I'm trying to get this area cleared out before we set up our shop as it were. We also need to make ourselves... Oh, we already have an extra campfire. Good. Fantastic. I'm happy about this. We'll drop a campfire right there, and let's get to the planning phase of what we want to do with our base. We've got the lathe. The lathe is going to be important a little bit later. Not super important right now, but important at one point or another. There we go. I had it in my hand. That's, that was my problem. So we'll stick the lathe like over here somewhere. We can use the lathe as a pole turner essentially that'll allow us to make the poles for better gear. So if you wanted to make yourself like a refined iron spear, just a spear that's very, very educated, has a 
supreme amazing outlook on the world and is also capable of just whipping out some mad satire that would be where you would want to do it. it's also where you would put refined sticks together in order to make hilts for swords and things of that nature just lots of crafting benches in this game that you have to be aware of we'll drop that crafting bench right there obviously this is not going to be the final place where we leave all of this stuff Got the chisel and the hammer. There it is. So we need the mason's block. That's what I wanted. So the mason's block is essentially what happens once you get to the point where you can no longer do masonry. You're right. It's like a writer's block just for someone that works with stone. Just keep that in mind. We've got the mason's block right here. Why is the mason's block important? Well, the mason's block combines the hammer and the chisel and allows us to make stones. So we can make stone blocks, which can then be converted into actual building materials so that you can build yourself a base. You can build yourself a house. How awesome is that? The other thing that I think we're able to do is let's go over here to the lathe. I think the lathe allows us to make planks and wheels and things like that too so that we can make ourselves some more refined items. We can make wooden bowls, things like that. We can convert logs into sticks which can be important because you will rapidly go through all the sticks on your island pretty quickly at least I've found that that's the way it's gonna be I'm thinking that this is probably a great spot to break off this episode for right now it looks like we've just about hit the point where I'm running out of things that I remember how to make anyway so I'm gonna jump on check the wiki refresh my memory I've been further than this I've actually built like full bases and everything but I'm really really bad with crafting recipes and I'm thinking in the next episode we're probably gonna focus pretty heavily on getting ourselves gear equipment and then starting the building process of making our base like I said the game is called Forsaken Isle if you want to check it out look down below I'll have a link for both the game and the green light page so that you can support it on Steam if you want to do that I would recommend supporting this one I see a lot of survival games that hit my desk and this is one of the ones that has potential I play a lot of survival games but I'm not comfortable vouching for a lot of them this game I think the development sense is in a really really good place I feel like the developers are doing a great job or the developer I think it might even be developed by one guy I think with where the game's at right now in its primitive state I think that ultimately Ultimately, it's going to be a very, very good game if they ever get around to, like, adding bosses, adding all kinds of, like, dungeons and things for you to explore, adding more islands. Add, they're adding boats pretty soon so that you can jump in between, like, islands. Maybe there will be different, like, there will be, like, icy islands. There will be glaciers. There will be tropical islands. I mean, really, especially if they open this up to the modding community, the possibilities are pretty much endless. So, Forsaken Isle is the name of the game. I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi do.